previously on MasterChef, a team challenge took the home cooks to new heights. Keep it up, guys. Running one of the country's finest restaurants where the competition reached the boiling point. There's nothing coming out. Start again. The whole round. Got a chef. Of course, the whole table. When the red team was declared the winner, the blue team headed to a pressure test. Calamari. Where Bree was sent home for the second time this season. Take your apron off. Tonight, the judges welcome some very special <laughs> guests. Our sons. As the heirs to the MasterChef throne. I want some ketchup. Peanut butter. Take charge of the mystery box. Do you have a boyfriend? I do have a boyfriend. And then, it's a showdown for a spot in the final four. What's the matter with you? I'm in big trouble. With an astonishing result. In the history of this competition, this is the most difficult decision we've ever had to make. The best feeling in the world. Top five. This is where the real competition starts. Welcome, guys. Making top five is such a big deal to me. Four people away from the title, from the cookbook, everything. You are the top five home cooks in America today. One of you will leave here with a quarter of a million dollars, your very own cookbook deal, and most importantly, the MasterChef trophy. We're about to throw you a mystery box curveball. Tonight, we have some VIP guests that will be putting together the mystery box. Please welcome... Our sons. <laughs> <laughs> the boys are cute, I'm not gonna lie. Gordon's son is adorable. He is a perfect little carbon copy of Gordon. It's crazy. I see three jaws standing there. It looks like I'm drunk. We have the judges 45 years ago. This is my 11-year-old son, Ethan. He's vocal and direct, just like me. And then Miles, age 13. He's my eldest son. This handsome little dude is Conrad. He's only two and a half, but already has an exceptional palate and deconstructs his hot dogs with finesse. And this is my son, Jack. He's 13, single, <laughs> and an excellent cook, and he loves great food. For tonight's Mystery Box Challenge, we are giving our kids that mystery box and sending them into the pantry to fill it with 15 items of their choosing. With those ingredients and your limited staple pantry box, you'll have just 60 minutes to create us a restaurant quality delicious dish. Not a dish for our kids. You're cooking for us. Understood? Whoever wins this challenge will get a huge advantage in the elimination challenge. Boys, your time in the pantry starts now. Off we go. This could be very big trouble. A bunch of kids have been given power over us, and now they're gonna pick stuff? They're gonna grab the most random things possible. I like this ball. We're all screwed, I think. Anyone for a glass of wine? Yeah, how about some ketchup? Ketchup looks good. I'm thinking they're gonna be picking everything from chocolate Please. to vegetables, to things that just don't go together. And peeking. Because they wanna screw us up and see how we handle it. How about they make some coffee? Yeah, sure. Coffee seems good. Where's the bacon? They're gonna have a sweet tooth. Peanut butter. Okay. Hazelnut spread. Mini pineapple. Gonna be making desserts probably today. Whee! Yes, mini marshmallows. I think this is pretty good. Here we go. Wow. White chips. Chocolate spread. Mmm, nice. <laughs> Ketchup. Oh, wow. Uh, wow. Thank you, guys. Uh, peanut butter. Man. Peanut butter. Jack. I just felt like a coconut. You felt like a coconut. <laughs> yeah. OK, great. Oh, come on. Marshmallows. I mean, honestly, baby pineapple, passion fruit. Finally. Wow. Some bacon. Oh, oh there we go. go. We've gone back down again. Cheese slices. Seriously. <laughs> Maple syrup. Bananas. Blueberries. Fresh strawberries. And puff pastry. Wow, wow, wow. 
they want it to be a gourmet restaurant quality dish. And how are we gonna do that with rainbow marshmallows and little squares of sliced cheese? Thank you. Can't wait. Let me remind you, we want a restaurant quality dish. Tonight, we expect you to show us that you can cook a master chef caliber dish with anything. Remember, you're not cooking for these guys. You're cooking for us. Your 60 minutes starts now. There's a lot of ingredients in there. But right. I mean, this is so exciting to see how good they can become mm -hmm. with unfamiliar ingredients. It's very, very tricky. They're out of their comfort zone. And we're asking them to perform at a very high level. So we should see which ones have these skills yep. to manipulate sure. these raw ingredients. But tonight has to be about desserts. What desserts would you make? I would do a stunning white chocolate milfoy with some caramelized banana. I would go on a tropical route, maybe even try to do a pineapple carpaccio, garnish it with some of the passion fruit. Tough one, though. I'm doing tropical pancakes. I'm going to do a coconut, I'm going to do a pineapple, and I'm going to do a blueberry, and then have it flared with the passion fruit. I definitely like to win another mystery box. I feel like I got to show everyone here that I'm still in the game and I'm not going anywhere. I'm making a um, banana cake with peanut butter, buttercream, and a white chocolate sauce. My challenge today is taking this cake to the next level. Hi, Jesse. Jack, it's a pleasure to meet you. What, what are you do? making? I'm doing little fruit tartlets. I've got a vanilla cream over here, and then some of the passion fruit, and I'm going to toast some coconut at the end. Nice. What's the chocolate for? I'm going to melt that and just do a little drizzle around the plate just to elevate it. Do you have a boyfriend? I do have a boyfriend. Coco Bello. Luca, what are you cooking? I'm making pineapple and white chocolate Napoleon. I'm going to try to make a little sauce with the passion fruit. Mm. Like Good. the idea? Yeah. Yeah. Where are you from? I live in New York. We're neighbors, right? Do you have any kids? I don't have any kids yet. But as soon as I win the show, <laughs> and I'm going to start making kids. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you, guys. Nice meeting Good you. Good luck. Nice meeting you, too. James, how are you doing? I'm doing good, Chef. What are you making? I am doing a white chocolate passion fruit turnovers with a coconut whipped cream. So you're a big fan of making desserts? Not particularly. I don't really care for sweets that much, but I'm going for something that's a little outside of my comfort zone. Right. So I'm going with flavors that I don't use a lot, like white chocolate and passion fruit, because I know acidity and white chocolate go beautiful together. Yeah, true. I don't think I'm going to get an advantage unless I pull something out that's unexpected for me. Good luck, James. Thank good you, luck. Chef. And thank you, Mini Chef. So how are your pancakes doing, Natasha? They're going okay. But are they a restaurant dish? I feel as though these will be, absolutely. Who's going home tonight? Oh, Chrissy. Don't you like Chrissy? <laughs> no. Can't stand her. Why? Do you guys ever have those people at your school that are bullies? Yeah. That would be her. Good luck. Thank you, guys. I want to see restaurant quality dishes. I don't want to have to put any of your dishes in the trash. <laughs> I don't think anyone wants that either. I mean, right now, the shiny stars this evening, Jessie sounds amazing. She's doing like little miniature blueberry Napoleons. Oh, like little wow. stacks. That's a good idea. James decided to go with a passion fruit blueberry lemon popover. There's good flavors. That's classic, it right? It sounds delicious. And Luca's Napoleon? Luca seems to be confident. I think he has a very good idea on the plating and the aesthetic of this yep. dish. I'm just wondering if he can pull together the flavors and manage the sweetness of it. Natasha, I was excited, but I can understand crepes three ways, right, but right. not pancake. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sounds really weird. Last 60 seconds. Start plating, please. Speed, 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 speed. The buttercream starts to melt right away, and I'm like, seriously, this is, this is not going to work. Let's go. So you got one thing on a plate. Oh, no. Unbelievable. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and stop! Hands in the air.
In tonight's mystery box challenge, yes, mini marshmallows. The judges' sons have picked a unique assortment of items, which the five remaining contestants must use to cook their restaurant quality dishes. Five, four, three, two, one, and stop! Hands in the air. It's time for us now to have a closer look. Throughout the mystery box challenge, the judges taste elements of all the home cooks' dishes as they come together. They now take one last look to choose the top three standouts, and the winner will receive a major advantage in the elimination test. I'm actually really proud of my dish. It looks restaurant quality. Let's just hope it works for the judges. OK, let's be honest, guys. It is way past your bedtime. Say goodnight to our home cooks. Um, I'll see you in the morning. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Good night. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you, gentlemen. Ciao. See you, guys. You're welcome. Good night. OK, there are three dishes that we want to take a much closer look at. One of these three cooks will be coming to the pantry and receiving a huge advantage in the upcoming elimination challenge. The first dish we want to bring forward, visually, it had that wow factor. Congratulations. Luca. Yes. Let's go. Right, Luca, that looks beautiful. What is it? It's a uh, white chocolate pineapple Napoleon. Nice. The even distribution of the pastry cream looks beautiful. Thank you. I love the filling inside. I thought the pineapple was going to destroy slicing through the milfoy, but you've managed to get it right. I'm surprised because you've never been that confident with desserts. And on the back of this performance over the last 60 minutes, you should be. Great job. Thank you. Really well done. Did you think about using the passion fruit or no? It was way too sour. It didn't go together with anything. I love that you are understanding how to edit your food, knowing that I'm not going to put passion fruit on it. It's too acidic. I'm just going to leave it the pineapple and vanilla. Super smart. Great job. Thank you, chef. OK. The dish looks beautiful. It's the best looking dish of the lot. Thank you. It's actually quite good. I think the pineapple is delicious with the cream. A top-notch, excellent dessert. Thank you. Well done. Wow. They all like the dessert a lot. And maybe it's the day I win my third mystery box. The second dish that we would like to examine further, this cook used fruit to elevate their dessert. And they still haven't won one. Please, step forward. Jesse. Yes, finally. So what exactly is it? A vanilla cream puff with fruit sauteed in brown butter, coconut on top. And these are all cream puffs, so they're all with like a, a Chantilly cream? The Chantilly or... cream's in the middle. That one's a sauteed blueberry with some lemon zest and sugar. And then the other one is the pineapple passion fruit. It's simple yet refined. Great flavors, great use of the really bizarre mix of crazy things that our kids picked. And you did really good. Thank Proud you of you. So Thank much. you. Good job. The passion fruit gives it that level of fragrance. Chantilly's perfect. Nice blend with the pastry. Pastry cooked beautifully, so it's bloody delicious. What's starting to happen is that you're getting out of this comfort zone, and it seems like you're now prepared to take a risk. It's a really good effort. Good job. Well done. Yeah. The third dish we want to look at the elements we tasted made us really want to try the entire dish. Please step forward. James. Here you go, Joe. What's the thought process here? I'm not a big dessert person, but my favorite dessert are turnovers. So I just made a uh, white chocolate passion fruit uh, turnover with a little uh, blueberry mint puree underneath and a little whip of cinnamon sugar and coconut. Very foo-foo for the big bearded man. I know, <laughs> kind of a weird thing for me to make. The flavors are good, the cookery's good, that's light, tasty, nice use of a tricky mystery box. You starting to take risks more? Kind of have to. <laughs> Just thinking, who are the strongest bakers left in this competition? Chrissy and Natasha. Guess what? None of them made it up here. Well done. Thank you. The 
flavour is incredible. Unbelievable. Love the filling, the mint and the blueberry just lifts it up and just sharpens it. I didn't think you had that kind of technical ability to nail it. So for me, it's a welcome surprise. It is absolutely delicious. I wish everybody standing behind you could taste it. Good job. Wow, a good dessert. I'm shocked. You used pre-made puff pastry. Congratulations. I feel really cheated. I'm actually really annoyed because, like, you know, here I am making something from scratch. I don't know. As a baker, I'm kind of offended. Uh, tough on this one. Mm -hmm. Tough. Not only that, we've got three stunning dishes. Winning a mystery box is super important, especially at this stage of the competition. I need to win this mystery box. OK, three of you, three stunning desserts. Sadly, only one of you can join us right now in the pantry and receive your huge advantage. The person who cooked the best restaurant quality dessert this evening. To be in the top five and have never won a mystery box, that's like the stupidest thing I've ever heard. I have to win this one. I doubt I'll go any further if I don't. Congratulations. So, three of you, three stunning desserts. Sadly, only one of you can join us right now in the pantry and receive your huge advantage. The person who cooked the best restaurant quality dessert this evening. Congratulations. James, well done. Wow. Great job. Thank you. I never thought I would win a mystery box with baking. That's pretty awesome. Now, are you ready to receive that huge advantage? Yes, chef. Let's go. Good job, James. Bye, guys. Good job. What took you so long? The winner of the mystery box is now in control of the elimination test. James, welcome to the Marcia Pantry. James, your first advantage for winning the mystery box challenge is that you will not have to cook. You are safe from elimination. James, congratulations. Welcome to the final four. Amazing. <laughs> Tonight's theme is so important. We're about to give you the greatest dishes that Joe, Graham, and myself have ever eaten. The first dish that was served to me in Singapore by one of the best chefs in the world. It is waku gin, marinated botan shrimp with sea urchin, custard, and the finest Ocetra caviar in the world. Jeez, it's pretty impressive. Your next choice, for me, has so many great warm memories associated with it. It's a dish that my grandpa Franny made with me when I was about 12 years old. We went out crabbing in the Chesapeake Bay. My grandfather's soft shell crab sandwich. This has the most uh, important connection with myself. The next dish, was in fact made by a phenomenal, elderly, toothless lady, Mrs. G. High. We were on a tiny boat on a floating fish market on the Mekong Delta in the middle of a monsoon in Vietnam. This bowl of Hu Chu Mai, a stunning, delicious, slow-cooked pork noodle soup. This, James, is the greatest dish I've ever eaten. Please, James, step up and come and taste all three dishes. Where to begin? <laughs> so first, you need to try wow. waku gin. I mean, the creaminess mm -hmm. of the sea urchins marred with that amazing saltiness of that Osetta caviar. It's like a roller coaster. Now you can try this. crap between two slices of bread is just incredible. Incredible. James, jump in. Absolutely. The broth is mind-blowing. It's like an assault of flavor right away. Remember, James, you're not having dinner. You're creating a strategy to win this competition. Oh, I am. What an amazing treat. For your second advantage, you will now get to choose which one of these three dishes everybody out there will have to replicate. Who's the biggest target? I think out of everybody, I think Luca's my prime candidate. 
Which dish are you going to give to all four of your fellow competitors? I choose. That's right, everybody. Not only did James gain immunity, he also got the chance to make a critical decision. In the pantry, we gave James the choice of three incredibly meaningful dishes. Meaningful because they were the greatest dishes that each one of us have ever eaten. The dish that James chose, that dish is my dish, the most amazing Vietnamese pork noodle broth. It's got the most ingredients. It's the most complex. The broth is insane. Layering the flavors is going to be insane. I don't think anyone's going to replicate this thing. Before you head into that pantry, I'd like all four of you to come up here and sample this incredible broth. There you go. Dive in. I'm terrified about the Vietnamese soup. And we have to recreate those flavors just tasting the dish. Chrissy, what do you think of the broth? I have no idea, you know, what these flavors are that I'm tasting. I'm in big trouble. Trying the soup, you have to use your palate to the extreme to figure out what spice is in there. If you forget one thing, you could be screwed. Excited? Yes, yes, Chef. No. <laughs> you want to go home? I, I, I don't know how to make Chrissy, this food. Chrissy, just taste it. Use your brain. I, I, I am. Figure it I'm out. I'm really nervous. OK, you will all have five minutes in the pantry to gather everything you need to replicate this great dish. If you forget anything, as always, you can't go back. Make sure it's good, because I've been waiting years to relive that memory. Don't leave me disappointed. The 75 minutes starts now. In the pantry, it's really a very tough moment because you need to go through your head, remember the flavors that you felt in your mouth, and make sure that I can put these flavors together. So I'm in the pantry, and I noticed that everybody kind of has the same things in their basket. So I felt like I cheated on a test in high school or something, but I have to. I got to keep myself alive. Nice. Wow. Good. What could be the most fundamental error a home cook is making now in the beginning of this soup? Where it becomes so spicy, you can't identify the sweetness the sourness, and those vegetables. And if that spice kills that pork butt, you're in danger. The secret tonight is how they infuse that stock, how you blend those spices. That's why you never season this thing at the beginning. It's done through moments. The minute you ignore it for 15 minutes, you've got a completely different profile. Looking over my basket, I'm looking all over, and I don't have garlic. Garlic is extremely crucial for this dish. I'm pretty much screwed at this moment. I know that Luca has garlic looking behind me, but we don't care for each other one bit. He's my biggest rival. So dare I ask him, Luca, can I use some garlic? Um. Luca, can I use some garlic? Uh. Thank you very much. Natasha asked me for some garlic. Why should I not give it to Natasha? That's not the way I am. That's not the way I want to win. Natasha forgot garlic. It would be really hard to ever come back from that. She asked Luca, and Luca just handed it over to her. He may live to regret that. I know how to make soup. I've just never dealt with these flavors before. So I'm going to do my best. I'm definitely not giving up. 
someone's going home. And in a perfect world, Natasha would go home. While they're down there cooking away, I'm already in the top four, so my confidence level's going through the roof. Professionally, I'd like to see Luca leave, because he's the best competitor down there. Personally, I'd like to see Natasha leave. If I get rid of one of those two today, I consider it a victory. Right, Natasha. Yes, Chef. How are you feeling? I'm OK. That smells nice. Thank you. What have we got in there? Um, I've got some ginger, some star anise, some cinnamon, some cloves. That smells delicious. Get that in two or three pans, start reducing that down so you can gain time rather than lose time. Yes, Chef. OK, good luck. Yes, Chef. Luca, what's in this pan? Cinnamon, star anise. Black peppercorns. I didn't season it yet because I know they're reducing it. Why don't you put salt in it? What's the matter with you? OK, I'm putting the salt. Then you're going to tell me it's too salty. I don't want Without salt. salt. I oh. want it to be the right amount. I know. Salt is like a magnifying glass okay. for flavor. OK, you're right. I'm going to make yeah. You care for the garlic? Yes. What's the matter with it? If I go home tonight, it's not going to be because I gave her the garlic. You sure? Honestly, I don't really care what the other people is going to do. I just want to do have the best dish over here, save myself, go up there, and relax. Good luck, Luca. Thank you. Whoa. Right, how are you doing? I'm doing my best, Chef. What have you done with the pork? I seared it off, and um, it is in the pressure cooker. Do you think you can nail this? Try my best here. <laughs> when you come across something that you don't like, why turn your nose up at something so delicious? No, I didn't turn my nose up. I was. Afraid of it. <laughs> You're good out your comfort zone. Stop mm -hmm. doubting yourself. <laughs> so adapt. You'll surprise yourself. Okay? Got it. Come on. Oh, some spice. Jesse, how are hey, you? Hey, Chef. Doing good? Does this dish screen social circle or what? Not at all. This is your broth right here? Mm -hmm. There's not very much of it. I know. There's not very, very much. Why is it so acidic? Do you already have the I lime? I just squeezed some lime in there right before. Remember, lime is it's just like when you're cooking a piece of fish. Last second, just to brighten it up. The more it cooks, it starts getting bitter. Gotcha. Good luck. Oh, this smells incredible. I love that pork stock. I mean, so it absolutely good. smells incredible. Some good dishes out there. Some very good dishes out there. I mean, Natasha is absolutely nailing it. Two pans on with the broth. One that's a natural broth, one that's already a fragrant broth, and she's producing and adding all the time. Almost like a risotto every mm -hmm. time, a little ladle. Mm -hmm. Jessie, being from Georgia, none of these flavors are there, but she's always on this boat, right? Yeah. She's stewarding it. Yeah. And you're going to run in the Caribbean. You've got all those sure. spices, chili, cilantro, a lot yeah. of those herbs that yeah. are in there, right? Chris's tastes nice. It's got that hearty flavor. Mm -hmm. It's got no garnish in there yet. It's got no pork butt in there, but she's got a nice base to it. A good Italian cook knows how to make a great chicken stock. If you just take the Asian version of a chicken stock, you can turn the soup into something that's good. You understand how to extract flavor. It's very difficult to judge, though, because with so many different stock pots, the formula that comes together at the last minute when right. they serve it to us is the one yeah, we do. Potion. James, from up there, who is looking good right now? I think out of everybody, uh, Luca's looking the best. Ninety seconds to go. Come on. Start assembling that amazing dish. Taste that broth before it goes in the bowl, guys. Ten, nine. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, stop. Hands in the air. Wow, that was a tough dish to replicate. OK, first up, Natasha, let's go, please. It looks like it's in well proportion as far as the vegetable noodle pork, maybe a little more pork, but I like the color that you got on it. You seared it mm -hmm. all the way around before putting it in. Yep, all the way around. The broth is a little sweet for me. Everything else is great. That pork shoulder, the braise, all the vegetables, everything's in proportion. But that broth that should be the star, it's, it's kind of like a supporting role. Okay. But I think that overall, everything in here cooked perfectly. The flavors are all there. Good job. Pork is delicious. It's cooked beautifully. Did you add any of the pork juices into your broth? I added just a couple tablespoons. It's slightly missing on that sourness, just to sort of balance that sweetness, that caramelized sort of stock. However, you've got the right balance of the 
pork to the noodles. Vegetables, stunning. It's good. It's very good. Thank you. It has good depth of flavor, but did you not have any salt on your station? No, I did. Why didn't you put any in here? I put salt. I just didn't put enough. The lack of salt makes it taste sweeter than it even is. Yeah. I applaud the effort. The dish is good. But is it good enough to keep you in the competition? I'm not ready to leave this competition. Natasha's dish looks pretty good. I think the judges are like on the fence, but at this point, everyone is a great cook. And right now, there's a good chance she can go home. I applaud the effort. The dish is good, but is it good enough to keep you in the competition? I'm not ready to leave this competition. Thank you, Natasha. All right, next up, please, Luca. The color is incredible. Thank you. Perfect. That's nice sear on the pork. Everything's in proportion. The flavor overall, it's got the heat from the chili, the underlying spice that you've toasted off there. Um, and I love the, the herbaceous notes with basil uh, kind of going throughout there. It's, it's amazing to see how much you are learning and taking that and gaining confidence along the way. Thank you. And you're getting into a rhythm, and you're starting to temper it and kind of balance and taste and go, and you are in the zone. This is really good. This is a great dish. You should be really, really proud. Good job. Thank you. Wow. Mm. See, this is so close. To that amazing, salty, sweet, spicy, Delicious broth. Honestly, just takes me back to that boat in Vietnam. Mind blown. The smell is incredible. I love the energy that you put into it. You are really seriously hitting the mark. Great job. Thank you. Seriously. Honestly. Next, we'd like to try Jesse, please. This looks like a beautiful soup. Thank you. The broth itself is beautiful, right thickness. This has depth in spades. It's very complex, it's layered, it's really good. I did taste the soup that Gordon made, and in my opinion, this is very damn close to that soup. delicious. It's fragrant, it's spicy, but it's got that crunch because the vegetables are raw. If there's one thing that I'd like to kick back on, is the sourness. The lime should be at the end. However, it's a bloody good effort. I just love the way you fight back every time. Every challenge, you're nailing it. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. All right, next up, please. Chrissy. I don't particularly enjoy Asian food. I've never been so intimidated or nervous in my life. I really tried, and um, I think I did all right. Oh, you got everything in there. Chilies, cilantro, basil, lime, carrots, bamboo. I didn't think you were going to get all in there. So not a big fan of Vietnamese food or just not exposed to it I as much. I've never been exposed to it. The flavors are all there. The negative would be that it's overspiced. I wish that it was a little more concentrated in flavor, mm -hmm. but I think that overall, everything in here is cooked perfectly and everything else is equally balanced and it's a very valiant effort. Good job. Thanks.
It has a lot of heat. I get like a spice on the outside of my tongue, on the front palate immediately. But ultimately, it's very complex. It's layered. It has a lot of flavoring in the broth itself. I think it's a good effort. I think it's kind of indicative of your trajectory and your journey here. Yes, you're trying. Are you hitting it on all levels? No. But this is a pretty impressive effort. Thanks. Mm. You know, too many noodles. Slightly lighter in color. Less fragrant than I would prefer. Slightly too spicy. But the foundation's there. So have you ever thought about the biggest problem in your cooking. Come here. It's you. Break down the barriers. Mm -hmm. You're so tense about, not for me, I'm going to stick to my comfort food in Philly. Get out of that and open your mind. You'll surprise yourself because you can cook. That is a good effort. Thank you. Mind blown, all of you, because I'm struggling to find a lot of fault across all these dishes. Spectacular performance by all four of you, but you just made it more difficult for us. Therefore, we need a minute, please. Damn, so difficult decision. Yeah. It's, it's very tough, because we are all very good. I'm just proud of myself that I got close on the dish. Yeah, yeah that's I'm good. Really we all did, and we should all be proud of ourselves. Please let Natasha go home. It's time. Natasha's knife skills and vegetables were great. Yeah. And they look professional. Yeah. But she spent too much time being technical. Right. I'm getting a little nervous because they've liked everyone's dish. The smallest little mistake could send someone packing. Anyone could go home today. Yeah, tough. Very, very tough. Especially when it gets down to this floor. I thought it was going to be too sour, mm -hmm. and it wasn't sour. It was absolutely on the button. He made a base and then took that pork stock that was mm -hmm. cooking down and mixed them all up like an alchemist. The longer it sits there, mm -hmm. the better it got. It was yeah, so close. Really... Yeah, you know, we're not a clear worse. Right. There's not any... Yeah, tough. Very, very tough, especially when it gets down to this floor. The judges like everyone's dish. And I'm kind of looking around, and I'm realizing, I'm like, I have no idea who could go home from this. Jesse, Chrissy, Luca, Natasha, please come down to the front. Jesse, Luca, please step forward. Both of you did an amazing job. Two very delicious dishes that were millimeters off the mark of what I experienced in Vietnam. We have to pick a winner. Luca, congratulations. Thank you. On the best dish of the night. Both of you, congratulations. Thank you. You're in the top four. Off you go. Well done. You know, as much as I don't get along with Chrissy and there's things that I can't stand about her, I feel as though deep down in my heart that we just don't deserve to go home. Natasha, Chrissy, again, two strong performances. That was an extraordinary challenge. You both came up with stunning dishes. This is where it's very hard for us but we have to make a very tough decision. Natasha, you cook like a dream. You've wowed us on so many occasions. You have the technical ability to cook like a professional chef. Chrissy, you've been in all the pressure tests, yet you fight back. If anyone confirms food's about an emotional journey, you're the one. This is one of the most difficult decisions we've ever had to make. Chrissy. You're going upstairs. You're safe. Please, <gasps> join the rest. I'm sorry. Diego, guess what?
Natasha, tonight was an extraordinary challenge. And all four of you put in an amazing performance. It is so difficult and so unfair because you produced a great dish. Oh, Natasha, this is just way too close to call. You are joining everybody else on the balcony because you do not deserve to go home. <laughs> I am sorry. The dish was that good and we cannot split the performance that all of you put in tonight. It was that close. You were that good. Get upstairs and join the rest of them. It's been extremely challenging to put aside my family and focus on something other than them. But seeing that MasterChef title and being so close to it has just put everything in the perspective of why I'm really here. That's all I want to go home with is that title. That is the first time in the history of this competition that we cannot decide who put out the weakest dish this evening. All of you pulled off a virtual miracle. Get some rest because next time you see us, if you thought that was pressure, we've just gone up to a different level. Good night. Next time on MasterChef. Hey, y'all. Welcome, Paula Dean. Heck yes. Now I get to cook Southern. Paula hosts a charity lunch. How about a little gator tail? I never made alligator before. The final five home cooks face off with some Southern cooking. Some things you just have to fry. As the top five Come on. become the final four. There is no more room for error. I need to step it up. The two winners are... One potato, two potato.